February 21st, a meeting of the Town of Hadley Select Board. Um, to come the meeting to order shortly after 7 o'clock. First order of business is the consent agenda. Uh, this evening we have a fairly short consent agenda. We have approval of the minutes from December 13th. Uh, four warrants, uh, two payroll and two accounts payable. We have a special municipal employee designation uh, for the planning board. And we have a resignation from the Hadley Cultural Council by Beverly Rhodes. So moved. Second, Second with discussion about taking off the uh, special municipal employee designation. I'd like more information on that. I, I concur with you, Joyce. And matter of fact, I think it's probably a great idea. I just think that we should do this once and once and for all, so that if any other boards, uh, independent people. You know, I should comply with that. Let's just do that once and get it. I want to know what it's for. Let's do it all. And so, yeah, for more information and to make sure that we include everybody that should be as part of that. Correct. David, should we put the, that on a separate agenda item at a future time? Mm -hmm. It looks yeah. like it's so. Okay. There's a whole explanation on it. Yeah. I know, but it's not enough for me to just do it for the planning board. I want to know what their jobs and duties would be if they were special municipal employee designation what does that entail for the planning board because it would be a it would be a conflict of interest with um say they were going to do something with um something to do with the building inspector mm -hmm. or anything of that nature because that all of that comes under their purview so i i, I would like a, bit, a little bit more information before i say yes to that Bill Dwyer gave the example at the meeting last night that if he was having a conversation uh, with either the assessor or the collector for a client, it would be a conflict. True. And that's that's what, that was his example of this. But that wouldn't mean he would be a special municipal employee. Mm -hmm. He would still wouldn't be able to vote on it when it became before the planning board because he has to recruit himself if it has indeed something to do with one of his clients. I'll do respect if we we're asking for it to be brought before us and explained, let's just do it. Yeah. 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 And then maybe you know we should take a look at any, any yeah. it's not that's not actually a good enough explanation to me. But, the conservation but we should take a look people at the, right, the other the other committees and stuff. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Last time you looked at this was back in two thousand and five, so mm -hmm. That was the last comprehensive review of it, so probably a time for an update. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll work with David to get in on the upcoming agenda. Yeah, you? <laughs> oh, you sweet talker. Okay, so um, we have a motion made and uh, seconded for everything other than that item. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, we do have time for public comment this evening. Is there anyone here for public comment? Marlo, did you bring anybody that wants to make a public comment or not? Well, no, I think she's all set. She's all she's set? She's observing. Oh, okay, all right. Thank just have you. Her observer. All right, no one else? Okay. Um, then why don't we roll right into the old business. First up, we have Steve Lewis Subaru back before us. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me back. Right. Uh, so I met Do you want to come up here, Joe, or are you going to... I'm sorry? Do you want to come up here? Or? Oh, um, sure. Yeah. Uh, so we, we met with the planning board last night, and uh, as, you, as some of you may or may not be aware of, there was a... Something that had came up that Jim had realized after the fact when he'd give me the information for uh, what we needed to have prepared for the meeting. One more step for the the this, uh, excuse me, but for the engineer to confirm, which we have verbally confirmed today, but we have to go back and meet with the planning board again just to get the final stamp of approval on that. It seemed that everything was a go other than that last detail uh, that we have been able to iron out. The snag that I run into is our, our hopes were last night to have the approval taken care of and then meet with you folks tonight so we can get the approval for the, uh, to have the class one license adjusted for the additional cars. Um, you guys had given us an extension while we ironed out these details. The only down, the only problem we're running at this point is our extension expires at the end of February. Uh, the, the snag we're gonna run into is our dealer plates have to be re-registered. Uh, the registration has to be end by the end of March uh, that process takes about 30 days or can take about 30 days so if we 
now we didn't go back through the planning board for these last few steps. It's going to run us into a, a potentially a little bit of an issue with the with the state of Massachusetts getting our dealer plates re-registered. The registrations last for a year. If I send it in with a temporary uh, license or a, a lic our license that shows that it's only good for a few weeks or a week or a month, uh, they will deny our dealer plates because the dealer plates are valid for one year. Planning board give you any idea when they'd be able to come back? Or yep, so we can go back at the next meeting. Uh, we, we can go. I believe it's two weeks. I believe that's what March it is. Six. Yeah, they said as long as we can get everything in order, which we did. Again, we were able to verify last night, or excuse me, this morning, that uh, the last piece of information that they needed is in fact we're going to be okay on that part of it. So we got to get a letter from Berkshire Design, bring it back to them in two weeks, and then we should be uh, good to go at that point. And where's your parking going to go? I'm looking at the plans right now. Yeah. So as as their request from the planning board, they asked if we move them a little bit further away from the road and turn them around to, you know, their concern was, you know, they didn't want to draw more attention to that area or they didn't want to, they don't want it to look like another retail spot for us. And, and I explained to them, by no means does it help us to have attention over there because we've not, we don't have a demand, you know, we don't have staff there to, to accommodate, so it doesn't help us. So our goal is the same as theirs, which is to attract the business to the 315 Russell Street. So the only the only possible concern we might have where the cars are currently parked is they might uh, require us to put up shrubs um, to cover or at least to, you know, just to hide it a little bit from the road so it looks more like a storage lot than it does a uh, retail spot. So if they do, in fact, do the shrubs, I think we kind of all agreed that it might make more sense to bring them back closer <coughs> to the road so that we can put the shrubs on the other side of the guardrail so it'll be just so it's more pleasing, you know, to, to the eye. So. Does their license for um, one facility cover the second facility, or does he need a second license? To be quite frank, I'm a little unclear on it. Um, the license, how the license reads, is one continuous facility or one continuous lot. I was hoping that Tim My Heart would be back so I could check in with him a little bit longer, uh, a little bit more, but he is out of town. Um, the lot, as I, as do you want to rescue me here? Because as I interpret it, it needs to be separate. Well, we're going to look into that. We'll get back yeah, to so plenty of time. <clears throat> and what kind of limit did the planning work for, for uh, cars? Uh, what we're looking for for approval is 70 cars. If that's if that's what you mean by limit as far as yeah. the number of cars. Yeah. Yeah. Which we haven't, in, in, that, in the time frame that we've been utilizing that space, we've been operating between uh, 30 at the lowest and probably 50, 60 at the most, but the only time we exceed you know that we number. You know count, right? What's that? You know yeah. Oh, count. yeah. The only time we exceed that amount is if we, uh, pre before snowstorms, we yeah. utilize that space okay. to, to help out. Maybe a day or two of those are on 30. Mm -hmm. What's that? Maybe a day or two. That was the lowest. I, I did say that was the lowest. <laughs> I'm not trying to kid you. That was the lowest, yes. So you're looking for an extension then. So we're well, meeting on March seven. 7th, which would be the night after the planning board meeting. Mm -hmm. So, I guess I mean what, what I would like to ask for, and, and it is because our class one license allows us to conduct business at 315 Russell Street. Right now, we have more cars than we're supposed to have based on that, and that's why we're sitting here having this conversation mm -hmm. today. Um, so, I'm hoping that we can extend our class one license for the year, and that the the continued conversation that we have is for the additional units to be approved by you guys, and, and where we place them approved by the planning board. So I'm hoping you guys can grant us the, the class one license for the remainder of 2018 to operate as we already operate as far as 315 Russell Street, knowing that you know we're waiting for your approval for the for the additional lot. Because if for some strange reason this doesn't get approved, mm -hmm. we have to go back to business as usual. We'll have to find we'll have to we'll have to talk to Subaru of New England to find out what we can do with the vehicles. But to you know you know ultimately what will end up happening is we go back to business as usual. We hope. <laughs> Um, but uh, you know, obviously, our goal is to get the additional lot approved so we can continue to grow and continue to work as we have been. So, so would the board consider uh, uh, granting the class one license conditional on any order of conditions that the planning board may impose? I don't think that's what he's asking. He's yeah. asking for his class no. one to be put he forward, to it, yeah. and he wants to have a second. Uh, not to, to exclude, not to, tie the, it not to tie it into the second lot that's available over there so that he can continue and get his business done is what he's asking for. And I, I hear what you're saying too, but I I think it's a reasonable request that he's making. We've had no problems with Subaru. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a motion that we grant extending the license 
at three three one three fifteen three fifteen Russell Street, um, and we hold back on anything that has to do with the uh, approval over at the uh, storage lot or whatever. Yep. I'll second the call. Restaurant. No, no. I'll second that. Okay. So motion made and seconded. Just a question um, for the for the board. If, if they can't negotiate or you know come to terms with the planning board, then by granting it for the full year, we've really lost any um, kind of leverage that we have right now. So I just want to make sure. I hope I hope I've proven that I'm willing to play by the rules I, and play I nice. I think after all this nonsense, we made it clear that yeah. we're going to straighten this out. We are all on the same page on that, okay. and I have okay. every intention of. Uh, but the whole thing is, we can grant you the license. And at any time we can pull it right. I'd be in violation if I if I don't so, get this approved. I mean, that's, We're all in the to same. To me, thing. that's yeah. never an issue. Yeah. Glad to give you a license as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do. If you're not doing it, we take the license back. Exactly. Yep. Very but simple. granting us the license for the 2018 allows us the timeline that we need and the deadline that we need to meet for our dealer license or mm -hmm. dealer plates. Yep. All right. Do you, you have further? an opinion? Hmm? Did you want to voice an opinion? That's the, yeah, that was the only thing I was contemplating was I don't I don't want to lose leverage and you're right. I mean we can Always. let the select board give us the select board can take it away. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And again, presuming good yes. faith, I don't right. I don't want to come across like yeah, just don't call me just waiting for yeah. <laughs> Let me go through the steps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So any anything else? Otherwise all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you guys okay. very much. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be watching you again next yes. uh, next time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, I am going to jump to Marlo. I'm assuming you're here for the cemeteries. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're not hanging out with us for the evening. I'm subjecting your daughter to this. Or you mm -hmm. <laughs> Leave that up to her. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let's uh, jump up to the cemeteries. <laughs> All right, so uh, we came to you at the beginning of uh, the season with uh, our concerns that we had lost too many members on the cemetery committee uh, and that we were in some danger of not being able to perform that function for the town. And Marlo was good enough to take up some of the pieces. In the meantime, Mr. Alan Weinberg has uh, offered his uh, services on the committee. So I think that's the first thing to do is to take that letter of uh, interest and see whether he should be appointed to the cemetery commission. And I think he wants to be in the old Hadley Cemetery. Yes, that's one of the two vacancies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Strongly recommend. Alan's a great guy. He's, yeah. That yeah. brings a tremendous amount to any of the board that he's been on. Mm -hmm. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so we still we still need to run the cemeteries. We have three things that we need to do. We need to sell lots and open up graves and perform burials. We need to care for the cemeteries and mowing and appropriate care, snow plowing when necessary. We also have a lot of genealogical work that gets done, and records, uh, uh, sorting out records. Do we have any burials in any of them during the winter? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So last week, we kind of took this off the agenda because I was in the process of, of I was going to meet with Mr. Weinberg. Um, <clears throat> so him and I met last Monday, um, I think the 12th, somewhere thereabouts. And we met for a good period of time and I explained to him the situation with the cemeteries and our needs and um, some of the history, the, the great work that, that Norm Barstow um, has done, the existing committee members and so on and so forth. Um, but now that we have this gap, um, uh, I explained everything to him, and then he showed great enthusiasm to take it to take on some of the administrative things we're kind of missing right now. That those were the powers that were given to the cemetery uh, <coughs> committee way back in 1928, uh, Article 30, um, and it basically states all, all the sales of the plots and everything to do with the cemeteries is under the, the empowerment of the cemetery. Uh, committee. Um, so what I, I was going to suggest as we make this transition and, and Alan, Al comes into the cemetery uh, committee, I was going to try and rally everyone and get them together and kind of come up with a plan how we're going to handle the cemeteries going forward. Um, in, in my mind, I think it, it would be a great um, 
natural relationship with the cemetery committee coupled up with, with uh, the DPW. Uh, because both the committee and the DPW had uh, doings in the cemeteries for many, many years. Um, uh, it, would, it would help provide, a, I could help provide a buffer from, to the cemetery commissioners, uh, you folks, uh, from the from the cemetery committee also. So, what I what I want to ask is that um, that I, I can be that person that buffer in between to kind of rally rally everybody together and, and, and get this thing organized or keep the organization going. Um, I've reviewed a bunch of records. Actually, some stuff made it onto a thumb drive, which is great. Uh, all the documentation. So, with with Alan coming aboard and volunteering to, to help put some of that stuff together, coupled with with uh, the DPW. I think we can come up with a, 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 a stable plan going forward for the cemeteries and, and we could meet at another date when we come up with, with a final plan of everything going forward. Um, and I believe that. the only way the, the, the empowerment to the, the committee can be changed is it's got to go to town meeting, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but what I'm asking of the board is, is you know, raising my hand volunteer and say, can, can I jump in here and we get this thing reorganized or, or get it going because mm -hmm. the phones are ringing off the hook. Uh, you know, from, from what you're going into one, one sunny day. Um, so I'd like to try and our department pick up the, that, that little gap we got going and see if we can get a quorum with the committee and, and get a chair and, and proceed that way. Any questions for Carla? So that was the only missing member? We, we still have one vacancy. Um, there's four and uh, there's, there's two cemeteries, Russellville and Old Hadley that both had plots left for sale. So the other vacancy right now is Russellville. There is one person that's coming kind of and expressed interest there. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> for Russellville. Yeah. Ms. Singles. Mm-hmm. Yes. The cemetery committee is a general not just. And Shade Tree with vacancy we have there. Diane too. Stangle. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Good. Perfect sense. Okay. Motion. So Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. Thanks, Marlo. Okay. That sounds good. Um, and actually, I realized I was remiss. Uh, yeah. Previously, Bev Rhodes resigned from Cultural Council. Will you be sending a letter on behalf of the select board thanking her for her service? I absolutely will. Good. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Apologize for not uh, catching that earlier. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. You're good to go. Thank you. You're released from active uh, auditing or whatever it is you're doing here. So. <laughs> you get a quiz later. Yeah, okay. Have a good night. Good night. Um, okay, so you want to go to the Senior Center and Library Projects update? Sure. Senior Center is um, meeting with the library who uh, next Monday we're meeting with the OPMs and the architects to uh, produce an overall uh, view of the site plan, which is something the select the planning board has requested. Mm -hmm. So we're moving forward with that. Okay. Um, and then I guess just a quick update since there's been some, you know, articles in the press and the like. So, uh, you know, we continue. We had a meeting today at the joint uh, that that overlap committee, the joint library and. I suggest a name, the Building Coalition Committee. The Building Coalition Committee, that sounds lovely. The BBC. <laughs> All right, so that's the group the that met today. BCC. BCC. One, one B and two C's. Yeah, It's late, I'm sorry. <laughs> so just BBC a couple of things. Is the beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a couple of things that came up at, at that meeting. So right now, the, the Legion folks or the petitioners I guess is maybe a better way to put it um, have requested audience with the select board on March 7th um, so we'll plan on uh, you know we'll have this standing agenda item at that meeting um, we did talk about the possibility of moving our select board meeting that night in anticipation that may be a robust crowd so we're looking to see if maybe we'll have it at Hopkins Academy that night because mm -hmm. again we don't you know we've been here before when people have spilled into the hallways yeah. and it's been difficult so we need to work that out with Hadley Media and the schools obviously in order to um, make that move so well we actually talked about that but unfortunately on Wednesday that would be ideal but on Wednesdays they have um, a committed 
AA meeting. Oh, yeah. It runs till 7.30. Every Wednesday, so it overlap. What? Okay. So, <laughs> so um, that was one thing that came up. And then the, the Joyce made me lose. Oh, you made me forget. <laughs> Jeez. Um, but then the, the other thing that we were talking about as well is there have been a fair number of questions about uh, the, I'll call it the displacement process. You know, so we've got Hadley Media, we've got the planning board. Um, Park and, and Park and Rec, you know, who right now are enjoying some space in the senior center. So people are already, again, jumping ahead saying, all right, well, once construction starts, what's going to happen? When are we going to have to move out? Where are we going to go? So um, at today at that coalition meeting, we did talk about the fact that that's really the purview of the select board. And I know that the Municipal Building Committee had also been having some conversations about that. But um, maybe sooner rather than later, we should be uh, digging into that so uh, honestly I have been of the mindset that um, the Goodwin Memorial uh, you know ultimately is going to become a vacant town building and the planning board has raised a question about the parking um, there whether or not th there will be an issue you know with the building construction etc so I think that that's something we need to find out sooner rather than and later obviously what's the answer there um, but the other thing is um, Hadley Media has been looking at the possibility of uh, they approached the library to see if they might be able to find some space within the library the new senior community center and uh, also the schools um, so they've kind of been taking up that charge on their own and figuring out okay this is what their their needs are um, one of the issues of the library folks broached today is that if in fact um, they were to try and accommodate have the media the only way for them to do that is to really create some sort of a, a bump out on the current design which in and of itself isn't a huge deal but it becomes a bigger deal because as we all know right now the biggest challenge we have is making sure we have adequate parking and if we modify the library building and create any more of a footprint we're now creating the necessity for more parking spaces. So, you know, I'm going to uh, go to their meeting on Friday to talk that through with them. Um, but maybe a couple of the other options are more going to be more helpful. Um, then the other thing is the planning board. I think the planning board perhaps has maybe been the most vocal about this. And um, David was just mentioning at the meeting today that you know perhaps the planning board should be coming back back into this building once once they move out of there as, as again a stopgap until we have a longer range plan it seems to make sense they used to be here right they used to have space here yeah, they used to be right there yep you know and what they, I mean? the they had basement storage for all of their plans. all their stuff so big issue of storage and they're scanning you know doing everything they can to get it digitized for the, uh, I mean, the planning board is fairly easy compared to five. Right. You can't just have them bouncing from building to building to floor to floor. I mean, it's right. Yeah. And, uh, these these are all things that were asked six months ago, eight months ago, mm -hmm. way back. What are we going to do with them? And now it's here. Exactly. Yeah, and you know, and I think, in fairness to these committees, it's it's really not the responsibility of the building committees themselves to determine where these folks go. I mean, the buck has to come back to this table. So, you know, want to take some heat off of them because they're the ones who are getting all of the, the questions right now. Badgering, perhaps, might be a good word to use. But I mean, it is. I mean, we, still, we have it. kept it on our plate for more than six months, actually, since all of this process. Mm -hmm. Uh, began where we're going to put people from the time we moved Park and Rec out of North Hadley mm -hmm. and te temporarily putting them into public school. Um, you know, we've known that we're going to have to do something eventually, and we just haven't. You know, our anticipation was using uh, the library when the other building goes down, but the, again, that's a you know two-year process, so you got to have some place for them to go mm -hmm. uh, temporarily. Well, Park and Rec's a little bit easier because really all you're talking about is a, you know, a phone and a desk. I mean, they're really not utilizing the senior center right now very much at all anyway. 
So they've been able to, to make it work. So I think the bigger issues are definitely have the media and um, the planning board. But the planning board, again, if we, if we can get them, I mean, just people, we don't have to decide tonight, but people could be thinking about that just so that we can comfortably start telling them, look at, you know, don't worry about it. Is, is there any empty school space at the elementary since the enrollment has not really gone up and gone down? Is there any empty space that they could utilize over uh, the two-year time frame that we could put maybe had the media at the high school? Enrollment is down over there. I don't know what mm -hmm. their space is right now, uh, well, but it certainly be something for us to um, look into. It definitely. And the issue, the issue that the school had right away was with um, access because mm -hmm. they it would have to be a self-contained space because when you open the school, their policy is you have to have a janitor, you know, and, and so it gets a little bit more complicated, but yeah, I mean, that could work. Um, what we also talked about today is the possibility of the Senior Community Center, again, on a temporary basis, utilizing one of, one of their rooms. And we didn't get too far in that conversation, but it's just, you know, again, we all need to figure out a way to, to cooperate and make this work, so. So more to come on that, but just wanted to broach the topic here tonight. There's one other group we didn't talk about, and that's a historical group that keeps their things at Hooker School. True. The Historical Commission? Correct. That's right. Yep. Okay. Yep. But we'll put them back on the radar, too. Jennifer? They're storing stuff over there, but they are meeting in Town Hall already. Right. Yeah. So I know that they're meeting here. They, yeah, they are meeting here. They have, a, they have an office, but they are meeting here right now. And you but have they a base have those. <clears throat> we do have a basement. We do. <laughs> I've been down there. Well, it's lovely. Our all house the, might be a little full. All the historical the stuff that they're storing in Russell School was upstairs in the library anyway, so why can't they put it back? That wasn't them. That was the historical society, too. That was at, at, Russell the library. School? at the library, no, at not the at Russell library. School. At the li I mean, at the library. The library. That was a historical society. And we have for a school for storage. Yeah, for storage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can't have people in there, no, but we can have no, things. No, no. Well, can you have things there with people wanting to come and go from them? I mean, that's having people in that building. I don't know how much they access the yeah. stuff that you're talking about. Yeah, I think from like an archiving standpoint, if they needed to get in and they had to call, you know, Mar Marlo to have Gary Bird provide them with access or something, that could work. So, uh, and then in terms of the library, so the library was present as well, so you know, we all know that they've hired their OPM, so they're now moving forward, and again, both um, building committees are working cooperatively. The library uh, did reach out today and sent David and I an email. They wanted to finalize their uh, building committee appointments uh, next, next slide board meeting as well. So, well, I would like to see, which we haven't seen, because of a set of plans. Um, some drawings or something that, you know, you people that have the time off during the daytime and get to go to these meetings gets to view uh, the changes and things that have taken place where John and I work during the daytime and don't have the availability uh, to get to those meetings. And I, I would like to see something about, because of the changes that have taken place, we weren't privy to that. It was a surprise to me that where the building had to move and because of parking and all of that, I didn't see any of those plans. Um, and I know that it's, you know, you have your meetings during the daytime and that's okay, but I, I would like to see something. Okay. They built one. Originally when you explained it to us, it was the core drilling and you just moved it over a little bit. And I was under the understanding that. Right, the plans basically- A little bit and a lot of bit are two different things. <laughs> they have not really moved the building a lot from the very beginning and we did show that at the town forum in May last year with the architects mm -hmm. there and everything shown. We also had it again outside town meeting last fall. And there's been a few slight modifications, but we're going to have another forum on March 15th at Hopkins to show everybody further advancements with the building, like what it looks like with furniture in it and some of the finishes. I just want to see the positioning of the building now that it's been changed a little bit and what's going to take place with, you know, in question is the parking lot at the Legion. So I, I wanted to okay. get I wanted to get a picture and a view of it. All right, so well we, basically. So we have a set of plans across the hall and I'll leave it out for you so you can look at yeah, it well after hours. They're available online. 
I don't think so. Okay. Basically, there's a 40 foot required buffer. Buffer. Back, no, not buffer. It's not the wet ones. That's 35 feet. It's 40 feet from the border to the side of the school, and that's where we're sitting. Okay. I just, I just like a, a visual. Yeah, I, I understand. Well, and that, and so that is, is the other thing. Is that a side setback? Or it's a back setback. Back setback. Because we're coming off Middle okay. Street. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah. Death, so I can yeah. meander at it this weekend. That would be great. First in the world. Thank you. Um, and just for the record, I haven't been, in, been to any of those meetings. It's just been what I've, what I've caught on YouTube. And, and, and I know this is your busy time, too, with taxes and stuff, oh, too. Yeah. But uh, I think one of the things that would be good for us to do at that meeting in March is we also talked about kind of recapping, um, you know, we've, and we've done this before with other issues that have been in front of us, rather than just have it. I mean, all, all of a sudden, a lot of people are going to be paying attention for, quite frankly, the first time <laughs> because of this issue becoming very public. So we really need to go back to, to May of 2017 because there was a public hearing with folks from the Legion present asking questions, and this was question asked, question answered um, that long ago. Mm -hmm. But then time goes on and then other people ask questions and then people forget, you know, so I, I think we want to bring people through the chronology too because uh, this isn't quite as um, dramatic as perhaps it's, it's playing out in the world court of public opinion in terms of, you know, big changes being made or anything being done in a, in a smoke filled back room. I mean, it's all been quite above board. It's just that people, I think, started hearing things and noticing for the first time, and unfortunately, we're well into the process at this point. So um, so what you'd be looking at isn't, I mean, it, it was shown back in May 2017 before the special town meeting. Here and put on your Public table. forum. I mean, that's all, it's all the same drawing. So, so this isn't a, a big shift, and I think it's important for people to understand that, too. Mm -hmm. All right, so anything, anything else? So everybody good about maybe that makes sense to kind of move it just in case we do get a, sure. a rush? I think it's a great idea. Okay, so we'll plan on that. Is there anything else from the meeting we talked about that I'm forgetting? No, I think I've got some homework on a couple of uh, technical issues, but that covers the major points. Okay, you good, Jane? I'm good. Okay. So where's it, well, let's say, <laughs> just say, where's the senior center going while this demolition and We'll be in our new building. All right, so that's going up first. We go, right. the new building gets built, we occupy, they demolish, library okay. build. So it's at that point of demolition that the other, the other departments get dismissed. And all things considered, that happens when? Summer of 19. Summer of 2019. Yes. Okay, yeah, so we've got time. Not much. I think it make, people will be much more relieved if there's a plan Definitely. before the last minute. Right. But I mean, I think we're, we're right. talking about it's it not now. tomorrow. We're just articulating it, but we've got time to, to gel these ideas, make sure that they will work. So. Okay. <coughs> All right. Then uh, let's see. So 2019 budget. And more, David? So I met with the uh, finance committee last night. Budget or warrant? Warrant. 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 Do I have a warrant? Okay. So I met with the finance committee last night, and they set up their schedule to meet with the divisions for the uh, to, in order to go through the warrant, uh, go through the budget process. Uh, I've given departments, and I've given you all electronically and in paper copy that schedule. Uh, but in general, they're meeting on March 5th, March 6th, March 19th, 29th, April 3rd. At that point, they will finish the budget itself. They'll meet again on April 9th in order to make their recommendations on the warrant articles. When do we have a public forum scheduled, David, before? We have a public forum scheduled for August, uh, April 26th, the Thursday before one week before. We need to post on April 26th. That's our drop dead deadline. Yeah. We're going to be cutting it close with that schedule. Yep. They set the schedule and they know, I'm assuming the some of the larger budgets are earlier and the smaller, less controversial budgets are later so that they can be. 
Right, so they're focusing on the budgets that they have some control over, the larger budgets of general government, public safety, education, public works, and then they're saving the human services, culture and recreation, and the uh, state assessment debt benefits, OPEP, things that they don't have any control over to the very last. Uh, they did talk about override. Uh, they're still interested in an IT director an HR director and a finance director, um, but they don't have any specific plans for that. I told them that they absolutely have to work with the select board on that because you control whether you have an override or not. Um, so my understanding is that you're allowing the finance committee to do the review of the budget if they run into areas where they need to consult with you or we need to untangle something that they'll be coming in and, and meeting with the select board. That's the understanding. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And so we're free to, anybody that wants to, you know, David gave us a schedule, you, they're open meetings, you yep. can go if you're interested. Uh, Did you shoot us those dates? I know you just read them off, but... Yeah. yeah, I think it prints it in our box or something. Okay. I know you emailed him, sir. And I'll certainly be publishing formal agendas for the Finance Committee as soon as we firm up these commitments from the, the divisions. And they're going to be meeting at the police? Nope, they'll be meeting in the town hall. Town hall, okay. Okay. And the meet, meeting starts at 6. And do you want to give us an update on the uh, four petitioned articles? So the four petitioned articles, uh, one was disqualified because they did not meet the minimum requirements for a petitioned article. They needed 10 registered voters' signatures. They only got five, so brought that to the select board, and you decided that you were not going to entertain it. This was the article to lift the moratorium on recreational marijuana, which we have in place until November 30th, 2018, to give us time to figure out what the state is doing with respect to their regulations. The, other, the remaining three petition articles are the uh, voting amendment, the changing the ways that uh, the town of Hadley would uh, conduct their voting to something that is sometimes called instant runoff balloting. It would be a special act of legislation which would um, affect all annual town elections for all offices in the town of Hadley. If this special act is adopted, then the town would have to put together a bylaw, which itself would have to be adopted by town meeting that spells out the details of how we conduct this. So what do you do in the case of a draw? What do you do in the case of a write-in candidate? What do you do in the case where you you know, you just what are we going to go back to, to uh, hand counting the votes? Well, that's one of the things that we need to talk about. Great. Is that none of our Don't machines. backwards. No, what's this going to cost the taxpayers? Yeah. Yeah. I sent an email to Jess. I don't know if she got it or not, because it may be a school vacation, but um, just asking from the town clerk's standpoint what the impact might be. Have you right. talked to her? I have talked to her. None of our ballot machines can handle this kind of uh, calculation. So, so they have special machines that? We'd have to get a special machine. And she, she really doesn't know what it's going to cost. Now I went down and talked to her. She, she actually voiced her opinion to me, and I don't know if she wants me to bring that forward right now or not, but I am going to be against this. Uh, just because of the cost, I believe it's all the new counting machines, stuff like that, are going to be. Big I don't bucks. think we've had a problem, so I'm not sure why we want yeah. to change it myself. Who, who petitioned this anyway? Uh, a citizen who has every right to do it. Yeah, it, it's a group over, um, it's actually a, a movement. Yeah. Um, Big movement. A, a significant one, yeah, that they're. It's certainly statewide in Massachusetts, and the, the name of the group is escaping me, and I apologize, but um, it, was in the paper. it was in the paper, yeah, the paper referred to it. So it's not just happening in Hadley, it's happening yeah. in Amherst. <coughs> <Magic Black. laughs> oh no, and in other places, too. Um, well, I mean, from a practical standpoint, it does come down to what is it going to cost us. There, 
there are absolutely good issues that and David had just brought up yeah. um, because I know a couple other towns and I have read them in a paper where someone didn't uh, accept the position they were voted they were voted in mm -hmm. for the position and the second highest voter got got the position mm -hmm. but that's a whole different story it has nothing really to, pertaining to this right here right yeah. now but that that's another issue that I, I did speak with Jess about this and I did speak to her about this other issue mm -hmm. because of the problem we have with five board members a lot of times obviously not this time we have plenty of people running again now. Yeah. but you know if we ever run into this situation you know we, what are we going to do yeah. without spending money and having another election mm -hmm. <clears throat> well um, before we get to the point of actually uh, taking a yeah. position on this, it would be helpful to have, um, I mean, I'd like the town clerk's um, impact statement. Yeah. It doesn't mean the personal opinion, but just the impact statement would be helpful. Yeah. For her office. Yeah, for the office. From the office, what it's going to cost mm -hmm. us possibly. Mm -hmm. okay. I just don't know what we talking about. We would about. also be required to do a voter education drive, uh, uh, so there would have to be a uh, you know, I don't know if there is a direct cost associated with that, but there would certainly be time and energy spent by town hall staff educating people yeah. as to how this would work. There would certainly be uh, a lot of time and effort put into writing the bylaw, because you notice that the mechanisms for instant ballot runoff, instant runoff balloting uh, are not spelled out here in any great detail, right. so we'd have to come up with that. I'm sure there are models out there. Jennifer, <coughs> excuse me, the petitioner did ask to, to come in and speak to the select board, and I had mentioned it to you, David, and she wanted to schedule something, mm -hmm. and I told her that y'all set the sure. schedule. Yeah, I mean, I've got, uh, yeah. I would be happy to have them in. It's always better to hear it directly, right? Just, just reports on me. Yeah, so we'll plan on scheduling them in probably in the in March. Or probably not this up. You know, Maybe uh, the 21st. Yeah, okay. I, I mean, both sides, if they want to come in and address the board, I have no problem with it. Just explain a little bit more to us what, what direction they're coming from. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's another side. I don't, I don't know there's another side. I think you yeah. mean Jessica or yeah. just the cost standpoint, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is there going to be any um, idea of what we're going to get back in state monies by the time this budget process ends, David? So the uh, House Ways and Means Committee has a uh, public hearing scheduled for March 19th, which tells me that they're going to reduce their budget a week or two after that. So last week of March and first week of April, we should see another cherry sheet. Um, the superintendent of schools did a lot of work and he was talking to me that the, the, the uh, high assessments for school choice and for charter she can't tie those numbers back to any real data. So there is a strong supposition that the governor's office just made an estimate as to what our choice and charter sending tuition would be. So we're thinking that we can knock that number down a bit. Okay. Okay. Um, any further conversation, just because you mentioned the schools, about the stabilization articles? Uh, no, but I did go over it with the uh, Finance Committee for the first time last night. And we talked about the mechanics. We talked about the benefits that uh, might occur from that. Okay. So, anything else you're looking for from us this evening? I mean, are you expecting us to take any votes at this point? Yeah. Or? No, I think, I think we're just beginning to dig into this. Um, I'll work with you to come up with a uh, schedule for making the recommendations on the, on the articles. I know CPA is meeting right now or mm -hmm. during this time frame. They've got two requests in, one for uh, painting the town hall and the other one for work, preservation work on the church in North Hadley. Mm -hmm. So they'll be coming back with their recommendations on those. Uh, mm -hmm. The only other thing I would say is that the town council and I had a conversation late last Friday on the last two petition articles of having to do with the senior center. We both agree that these are majority votes. 
for those two petition articles. Mm -hmm. there, there's further legal research that we're doing that may change some of the effectiveness of these votes. Yeah, I think we would check into that and yeah. get that in writing. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then the other one I was thinking too, uh, the appointed treasurer and collector, mm -hmm. that article, uh, probably be good to have, have Sue and uh, Linda come in too. We're going to talk about that so that yep. they're present for that so we can schedule that later in March too. I had a con private conversations with both of them so that they understand the intent of this. Uh, Linda has reviewed it and she's come up with a technical correction, which I think is entirely reasonable. Uh, and so I think they're engaged for this. Okay, good. Okay, anything else on the warrant? Okay, all right. All right, then if not, then moving along to North Hadley Village Hall. Uh, it was my intent when I brought that up at the last meeting that we um, be uh, doing this with some other boards so that we do it once <clears throat> once and once and for all. So if the information that we have available in front of us is just for clarity, that's great. But I want to, like I said, I want to make sure that the Municipal Buildings Committee, and, and this is just so that we can all be on the same page. Mm -hmm. right. Historical yep. Commission, the Planning Board, Municipal Buildings Committee, ourselves. Let's all sit down. Let's know where we can park, where we can't park, what we can put in there for um, apartments, what's available, what's not available, and so that we get a, a document put together that hopefully is a reasonable bullet bid on, yeah, a reasonable <laughs> bid on, on the property. So do you happen to know when they're meeting again? No, because I was wondering, I mean, our, uh, I, don't, I hate, to, hate to add that level on to March 7th, because <laughs> we're going to be pretty full. But I think that's pretty full meeting there right. that you're looking at. And again, the, they just want to have an idea. Can we just Building give them, the do they have this 20. information right now? No, we'll get this to them, and so to everybody. This information to, to all everybody. the boards exactly. involved. And well, that's what we, we should come up with a date, and then to your to your point, John, make sure everybody has all the information. Yeah, I mean. So March 20th, maybe? 20th. Yeah. 20th is when the Municipal Building Committee is scheduled yeah. to meet. So we would be the 21st, which is that Wednesday. Right, but we've got so much with the um, getting ready for town meeting and everything. I was just wondering if we should go to their meeting. I, I Let me ask them if that's okay. a fair question. So just because I have a feeling it's going to be more than just like a half hour discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, you want to ask them? So either the 20th or the 21st at ours, what their preference would be? Or what I their know. ideas are for time and you know, how they yeah. feel it because you're coming up on town meeting pretty right. pretty quick there and I know how those time gets squeezed. So yeah. we're going to have better information shortly as to how the uh, um, the meetings are going with the finance committee and you know, we'll but we also have the, um, we still have the article out there for the fire station, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, for the additional funding? Yeah, that's under the capital article. So I'd love to have this conversation before we get to the town meeting floor. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Joyce, I said subcommittee met. I met with Mr. DeCabitz and he said he was going to call a meeting. We, we have not met yet. Okay. Maybe it would be a good thing. Okay. Because I think my number that I'm using for the town warrant is pretty old at this point, so we may want to look at that again. I thought Mike just said last week that he had a number he was comfortable with. He did, and I think, you know, we're, we're trying to probably we rework things. Uh, we had some discussion in the ambulance study committee meeting um, about housing an ambulance at some point in time. Um, and going forward from there and what the fire department is going to be looking like. So, you know, the thing is, is that where are we all going to have this? Is it going to be center station or do we truly need to do a North Hadley annex? Um, so that, that has been kicking around, which certainly deserves to be brought with the uh, subcommittee. So I think, you know, having a meeting sooner, I'll, I'll contact Mike and yeah, if we See if get we can some get direction, that would be good. What a segue. Perfect segue into the Ambulance Study Committee <laughs> update. She's done this before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the ambulance um, subgroup met, and uh, the conclusion that we have come to 
is that we would like to recommend to the select board that we pursue um, a negotiation process with Amherst for a two-year contract with a one-year renewal period. Um, we would like to see how that negotiation process goes. Um, and recognizing that, you know, I mean, we, we were very, very impressed with Action EMS, I think surprisingly so. Um, and there, there are some lingering concerns we have with the, the relationship that we have with Amherst, so, um, but we can't really take it any further into, to, until we see what Amherst uh, is willing to bring to the table. And so, that's a recommendation of the study committee? So moved. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. So all in favor of pursuing uh, and that path and then more to come, obviously, before anything gets inked. There's uh, any, any legal uh, hurdles that we're going to be crossing here no, no, with, the, of with the contracts not aware of or any with the proposals? Not aware of any. You're, what you're doing is you're pursuing all options right now. Uh, you haven't uh, said no to your vendor yet. And um, action is still on the table. Let's, let's make it clear. They did come back, we can say, and uh, gave us some new numbers. Um, that's why we would still like to see what Amherst uh, would come up with, because it's, it's not a done deal with uh, Action EMS. Um, but we do, because of our history with the Amherst, like to see what they have to offer. And the committee, uh, the, the work group would like to stay uh, intact because, you know, Presumably tomorrow morning, Dave is going to pick up the phone. He's going to call his colleague, Mr. Bachman, over in Amherst, and they'll they'll look at their schedules and all of that good stuff. And so we'll move forward in that regard. But then ultimately, when we get to the point, um, John, where you know a contract is about to be um, inked, the sub the, the work group would really like to see that because one of the issues we ran into in the past is you know some changes occurred over time and kind of got away from us. A bit, so we want to make sure that uh, it's in concert with everything that we heard firsthand. And the select board will still be entering into contract. Oh, of course, the yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, but just like you know, well, again, seems like a good I mean, work, work for it. I looked at some of the things you're doing, and they're just not apples to apples, you know. And, mm -hmm. and I and I understand, but I, I just don't want to get a, ourselves in a bind uh, in a bidding process that someone has bid on. Maybe we should just take the bidding right out of it and stay in negotiations with those two that are interested in it. You know? What? I think that's where we're at, right? The fact that that's, we only have the two Amherst in action. Okay. All right. Um, I was going to make a suggestion to Mike, and I haven't even mentioned it to him yet. Um, Do we do all those in favor? Oh. oh, yeah. Are we on another topic? No, we aren't. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good catch. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if this was. Yeah. You're going to add to that? No. No, I, had, I didn't know if you were going on with it, the same subject here. If we had no, I'm, I'm, I am discussing ambulance uh, and response times. So uh, if we sh know what it is, if, if a, a mock uh, drill of response time. Uh, could be done between calling a response to go to the farthest end of north, east, and south mm -hmm. to see what our response times would be. Um, pulling the alarm, having people show up, and going for that when we have already four people in the station during the day, and what it would be, we we'll call people at nighttime mm -hmm. uh, just to get a rough idea of what our response times are and compare them. Uh, to what other people are asking us, are telling us that it, their response times are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're still, I mean, under, under any circumstance, we're a couple of years away from even thinking about bringing it in now. So, yeah. response time. But it would still be so good to know. You should, have, have. you should have all that. Yeah, they do, did you see? But we don't have a yeah, lot, we, we don't have a response time to those things. If we did ourselves versus what we have for correct yeah. using center station as the yep. focal point. point. Mm -hmm. 
Anything else? Next meeting is March 7th. I mean March 7th. <laughs> Sorry, nice slip. I was trying to skip over that one. Okay. Did David yeah. have anything else for us? Yeah. Anything ministry? else in your report or anything you want to do, son? Or? Uh, I said, you know, I'll let you read it. I won't summarize it. There's, we've been focusing in on town meeting almost exclusively, so that's that's it. All town meeting all the time at this point. Okay. Plus all the other stuff. Plus all the other stuff. We did have damage done to the um, West Levy. Street Common and. Uh, the United uh, States Postal Service came and met with me. They're going to make it right. So oh, they did? Work, yeah. They apologized for the, uh, the rookie mistake that was, that was perpetrated. Mm -hmm. And then there was damage done to the dike. Nothing serious. Um, some juveniles that decided to take a joy ride. Can't give in a whole lot of details, but we'll be working with their insurance to make that I'll put that dike back together. There's a public service announcement. The ground is really wet and <laughs> soft. And very soft. <laughs> and we see it's anybody. still walkable though. <laughs> the, the levee is still a walkable commodity at this time. We haven't shut it down due to the ignorance today. That's correct. It's okay. still walkable. Bring your wellies <laughs> because it's muddy. Uh, it's still going to hold back the water. So. Uh, we're in good shape. Yeah, we'd hate somebody else to slide instead of down down here yeah, down exactly. the West Street side and go to the river side. So the irony of those two incidents occurring in yeah, the same, same two days is ridiculous. Yeah. No no spring weather. fever. Yeah. Well, it's okay to freeze tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got extra help for the dike this year. The icebergs out there, yeah. or the glaciers. Yeah, <laughs> some floating glaciers. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else then for tonight's meeting? Any announcements? Do not. Do not. Motion to adjourn. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody. Nice job. There we are. <laughs>